Namaste children, how are you all? I hope you are all fine and your families also too. That is good to hear. Okay, now let us discuss about our daily activities. So what we will do daily? Daily we will get up early morning and brush our teeth, take bath, pray to the God and do some activities, attending online classes, and playing with friends or cousins. So, we will be doing these all activities every day. To do these activities, we need energy. So, from where do we get this energy? Any guesses, children? Yes, most of you are telling. Answer is plants. So, plants give us food to get energy and to do all these activities and we call plants are producers because plants prepare their own food by photosynthesis that we all know and plants will use little amount of food to survive and rest food will be stored in different parts of the plant so let us see which part plants will store their food and that we are using as vegetables and fruits. Okay, let us see in this chart. Plants store food in leaves. For example, spinach, coriander, cabbage, lettuce, basil. So these are all leaf vegetables we are using as food. So next come to stem. So, potato, onion, garlic, ginger, sugar cane are the stem part of the plant which we are using as food. Now, fruit. We all eat fruits. We all love fruits. Okay? Such as apple, orange, mango, banana, the fruit part where plants store food. Now, let's move to the seeds. Example for seed, wheat, maize, rice, peas. These are all example for the seeds. Such as cereals and pulses are the food which we are using. That is seed part. Now, flour. So, cauliflower, broccoli, banana are the best example for the flour which we are using as vegetable. So, plant will store food in the flower part and do you know children even we will eat bud also for example clove clove is a spice which we will add to food to enhance the taste okay so by discussing this we come to one conclusion that plants store food in different parts of it so we come to know that food is basic source of energy we can't live without food for two three days we can live without food but after that we have to eat food to get energy to do various activities okay so what kind of food we should eat we should eat balanced diet so to eat balanced diet to get the enough amount of energy to do all these activities daily we will eat three main meals of the day those are breakfast lunch and dinner so we'll not eat same food for breakfast lunch and dinner we will eat varieties of food to get enough nutrients to our body to do activities here children i have used the word nutrient so what is it a diet has certain components which are essential for our growth and development. Those are called nutrients. Now, we shall study different types of nutrients such as carbohydrates, protein, fat, vitamin, mineral, water and roughage. So, in this video, we are going to study all these things one by one.
Now we shall discuss about carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are main source of energy for our body. This energy is used by us for forming various life sustaining activities. The daily food we eat rich in carbohydrate and it consists of two main types of carbohydrates are starch and sugar. Now let us see the carbohydrate rich food. So cereals like rice, wheat, corn, these are carbohydrate rich food and potato, sugar, milk are also best example for carbohydrate. Now we shall discuss one more most important nutrient that is protein. Food contain protein are often called bodybuilding food because proteins are required for building, maintaining and repairing old out cell. That's why growing children and sick people advise to eat lot of protein rich food. As I mentioned you that protein rich food or bodybuilding food. So we need protein to build our body and stay fit. Let us see few example for protein rich food such as milk, egg, groundnut, pulses, meat, soya bean, peas etc. Now let us discuss one more important nutrient that is fat. Fat is also energy giving nutrient like carbohydrate but our body uses carbohydrate more than fat to produce energy. If we eat lot of fatty rich food that leads to obesity. Here I would like to tell you one fascinating fact that is why junk food is called so. Because junk food has only fat and sugar in it. Eating excess of junk food leads to obese. Fat is also helpful to us. How it is helpful to us? Let us see now. Fat forms a layer under the skin and hence provide warmth to our body. And even it gives smooth texture to our skin also. And do you know children, polar bear, it is living in extreme cold, snowy region. Then how it survive in that extreme cold? Here, fat is helping that to survive in extreme cold. How it is? Let us see. Under the polar bear skin, fat forms a thick layer. And that thick fatty layer helps the polar bear to survive in extreme cold climate. And even fatty tissue is there around some internal organs such as eyes and kidneys. So this fatty tissue offers the protection to those internal organs from damage. Now let us see example for fat rich food. Those are egg, meat, cashew nuts, almond, butter, groundnut oil, coconut oil, fish, meat, etc. Let us discuss one more important nutrient that is vitamins. So vitamins are also called as protective food because these vitamins are protect us from various diseases. Our body needs little amount of vitamin to protect from diseases. Let us see few vitamins such as vitamin A, B, C, D, E, K are the vitamins which are essential for our body and fruits and vegetables are vitamin rich food. So, so we have to eat fruits and vegetables on regular basis. Now let us move on to discuss one more important nutrient that is minerals. Minerals are also called as protective food because these also protect us from diseases. These are very important nutrient 
for good health and well-being. These are required small amount to our body to protect us from diseases. So let us see few minerals such as iodine, iron, phosphorus, calcium, etc. Now let us see few examples for mineral rich food such as apple, jaggery, fish, tamarind, brawn, etc. And green leafy vegetables are very rich in minerals. So we have to eat on daily basis. Now let us discuss two more important nutrients. Those are roughage or fiber and water. Now let us discuss roughage or fiber. Children often we advised by a parent to eat peel of the fruit and raw vegetables. Why is it so? Because they are rich in fiber. This fiber is very very important to us because it will help to remove undigested food from our body. And eating lot of fiber rich food helps easy bowling and ultimately the removal of undigested food. Now let us see fiber rich food examples. Fresh fruits, vegetables, whole grain, pulses are the example for fiber rich food. Now let us discuss water. Water is not considered a nutrient yet it is essential for us to survive. So as we all know that our body contains 70% of water. So water is essential for us. Water is important for us for several reasons such as it helps our body in absorbing nutrients it helps in transporting substance inside our body. It helps in throwing out waste from our body in the form of urine and sweat. Water helps in regulating our body temperature, for example, through sweating. Hence, we need to replenish our body with water. Now, children, let us move on to study digestion process, how it happens in our body and what is the definition of the digestion. So now let us know about the definition of the digestion. The breakdown of large insoluble food molecules into small soluble food molecules to be absorbed into the body cells. Now let us discuss about the digestion. So, in the digestive system, there are small organs which join together and form a long tube. That is called elementary canal. So, that starts from mouth and follows to food pipe, stomach, small intestine, large intestine. So all organs are there in the digestive system. Now let us discuss how digestion process happens in our body. So once we keep food in our mouth, so with the help of teeth, we'll start biting that food and making it to small pieces. That small pieces mixed with saliva and become soft. Then that food goes to the stomach through the food pipe. Then in the stomach, there are digestive enzymes and some acid secreted those will act on the food and digestion happens and solid food turns into liquid form of food that liquid form of food pass to the small intestine in the small intestine there are digestive juices which act on the food and absorb nutrients from the food those nutrients pass through the all parts of the body through the blood vessels which are connected to the 
small intestine. Then after absorbing nutrients from the food, that undigested food moves to the large intestine. In the large intestine, minerals and water absorbed by large intestine. Eventually, undigested food moves to the rectum and come out of the body through the anus. So, this is how digestion process happens in our body. Children, I hope the content is clear for you. That is components of food and digestion. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. So, be safe. Stay at home. Dhanyamad.